what a beautiful afternoon on the edge of the Sierras. A hop, skip, and a jump from Lake Tahoe. We are in Reno today at the Lawler Events Center. The Nevada Wolfpack hosting the Boise State Broncos in Mountain West action. Hi again, everybody, along with former Colorado State Nebraska head coach Tim Miles. I'm Tim Never. Happy you're with us on FS1. Big game today in the Mountain West. Boise State looking for some payback after Nevada upset them here Friday night. We had a great game, a thriller on Friday night with Nevada coming down on a last-second shot and winning. Leon Rice today, 14-3 and with Boise State. Feels like he's in a must-win situation. We've got a great one coming for you, folks. I like your, I like your tie, coach. Isn't it nice, right, John Chaney? Mountain West Conference standings, Utah State atop the table right now, although they did not play against Fresno State. That game postponed uh, last night. Colorado State, San Diego State, Nevada in the fifth spot. Starting lineups this afternoon. For Nevada, Desmond Cambridge Jr. has been outstanding. Also, Grant Sherfield, a guy to watch, had a career-high 14 assists on Friday night. Cambridge and Sherfield, a great guard tandem. Derek Alston Jr., keep an eye on him. And Marcus Shaver really moves the ball around. I know that Leon Rice will be looking for some more physical play out of Mladen Armish inside. No doubt about it. I don't think that uh, talking with Coach Rice even today, right before the game, uh, he didn't feel like their physicality was where it should be defensively. And that'll be important to watch tonight. It's always interesting when a coach talks about physicality. Are we talking stay out of foul trouble too, Coach? Desmond Cambridge getting ready. There is Alston. He is certainly a candidate for player of the year in the Mountain West. Grant Sherfield. What a game he had the other night. Double-double. Hit the game-winning shot with 2.9 seconds to go. Makes it hard to sleep after that game winner, Tim. Certainly does. So Washington to tip with Armish. And Nevada wins the tip. Wolfpack in the home whites. And Boise State wearing the road orange uniforms today. Inside Washington fouled right away and committing the foul, Abu Kijab. Very good interior pass there. Nice catch by Washington. First foul of the game. Comes just 11 seconds in. Sherfield looking to trigger the inbound. He finds Cambridge. Dennis guarding Sherfield. AJ Dennis. Could have won it with a three. The ball looked like it went in. Foster gets the home roll, and Nevada breaks the ice 2-0. Well, you can see why Steve Alford and Craig Neal love the, the freshman. Very crafty offensive player. From Melbourne, Australia. Come a long way to play collegiately. And had a bit of a shoulder problem that caused him to miss 15 games at the beginning of the season. The first game wasn't until the 22nd of January against Wyoming. Three ball from the corner, good for Kijab. Abu Kijab, transfer from Oregon. He had a stellar game on Friday, but Broncos came up just two points short. Sherfield fills it up. Well, he got that switch, got the mismatch, was able to get separation and make an excellent offensive move. Good pass by Dennis. Armish gets the basket and the foul. Blocking foul inside. That'll be whistled against Warren Washington. And starting a game with consecutive made threes is always uh, uh, good news for a basketball coach. You love to see that. Here, look at this nice little play. Holy cow. Well done, Sherfield. Leon Rice, 212 career wins. His 11th season. He wins today. Tie a Boise State record. He's looking at the clock right now. Rodden Amish making an impact early. Yeah, the transfer from East Tennessee State has done a great job. You know, Tim, I've only had two, two of my three sisters text me so far and tell me to fix my tie. So. Uh, <laughs> well, they didn't know it was the ode to Joe Cheney. Yeah, so um, I just want them to know that's enough. Okay, we got this covered. But one of our first reviews today... I want to check and see if this was a three or a two from Sherfield. Lane violation. So the ball turned back over to Nevada. Key jab in the lane a little early. 
those things drive you bananas, but KGF such a scrapper, a hustler, high intensity player. Trey Coleman. Doesn't surprise me that Steve Alford has a freshman from Indiana starting for him in his, uh, one of his very first teams. Of course, this is his second. I think it's gonna be a rule for him. He's gonna have an Indiana guy. Therese Gary was his last one in New Mexico. Yeah. Held ball situation, and the arrow pointing back toward Boise State. Look at this. Nevada all-time 49-28 in the series. Mark Fox, Trent Johnson, who played at Boise. We're back to the days of Nick Fizikas. Great players they've had here in the past at Nevada. They had won eight in a row against Boise State until last year. Let's go! Let's go! Rebound ripped down by Washington. Nevada trying to break the tie here early. Friday night, it was back and forth, several lead changes. Well, there were just seven alone in the first half. Oh, good cut by Sherfield. That's blocked by Milad Narmash and out of bounds. Armish does a very good job. He, Leon Rice says it's his best defensive center he's had since he's been a Boise. Nice cut, a little flex cut there. There's been Cambridge Jr. with a bucket. Cambridge Jr.'s dad averaged 5.5 steals a game at Alabama A&M as a senior in college. Is that right? Five and a half. He's <laughs> unbelievable. That's some good defense for sure. Watch this little flex cut right here. Back screen, wide open, no help. Those shooters set those back screens, puts a lot of pressure on a defense. Well, Cambridge, you got to watch today. Transfer from Brown University. You don't get a lot of Ivy League transfers out uh, west. Home of the fighting Mike Martins. <laughs> Mike Martins, the head coach there. I know Doug Gottlieb had, had him on his radio show the other day. Ooh. AJ Dennis with a one-handed runner and Foster the rebound. He's got a little game to him, old Ray J. Dennis. Skip pass to Coleman. Handoff, Sherfield. Foster was alone for just a moment. Try one. A wild shot ends up in the arms of Armas from Boise State. Lamont Armas has to hand to Ray J. Dennis. Dennis running the point. Shaver, explosive player, lines up a three. And a skying rebound for Cambridge. Oh, long pass. Good pass to Washington. Uh, he just needs to finish that. A little more core strength. Armush is very, very physical in there. But he's a good rim runner, Washington. Emmanuel Acott in the game, backing in. Acott had a career-high 19 points on Friday. And he did it in a hurry. I think he only played 15 or so minutes. He had tied his career high in the first half. Now, Alston for three. Pardon me, 25 minutes. Alston, if you give him any space at all, he's going to make you pay. Now, if you can get physical with him and play without fouling, but chest him up, he'll struggle a little bit. 8-7, Boise State. Foster was picked up by Acott. They give it up. Cambridge fires it to Coleman. Somehow got the pass through. Austin with there with the block, and Coleman with the putback. Right place, right time for Trey Coleman. Another early lead change. Turnaround jumper for Austin. He used the rim, and it counts. Same thing. He just get, He's able to get a little separation, and any time he can get away from you, he's got the length to score over you, around you, whatever it might be. He could have a, another big game. He had a 20-point game Friday. He's got nine of those this year. 31 in his career. And an offensive foul will be whistled against Desmond Cambridge Jr. A factor already in what's been a seesaw early portion of the first half in Reno. Leon Rice's lobbying paid off. The officials did review the Sherfield three-pointer. He was indeed inside the line, so they've taken one point away from Nevada. But Emmanuel Acott, back in the game, 
Boy, did he have a good game on Friday. Six three-pointers on the year. Tim made four on Friday night alone. Really an added bonus for Leon Rice and the Boise State Broncos. He's back in the lineup here. Came off the bench. Averaging a little over eight points and almost four rebounds a game this season. Had to sit out last year due to the transfer rules, but as did a few players in this Boise State team. So their roster turned over a little bit once the folks started to become eligible. And Acott brings it down the floor. Hands to Max Rice. Boise State in the orange. Nevada in white with Tim Miles, Tim Neverett. Mountain West basketball on FS1 this afternoon. Meeks with the rebound. Zane Meeks. Had a big game. 19 points on Tuesday against UNLV, a career high. Tim, you and I talked about it off camera that how important he is to Nevada. When they haven't had him, they've struggled. And he adds a lot of depth to their bench. I mean, Steve Alford feels he can roll about nine guys fairly comfortably right now. Sherfield with the save and grabbing at Kane Milling, but he's fouled. Devonair Dutrieff will commit the personal. K.J. Himes almost threw that away. He has had consecutive career highs in the last two games and really played a key role for Nevada in wins over UNLV and, of course, Boise State. They're trying to find an answer for Himes. They didn't have one Friday. Boise did. Sherfield launches and hits. That is a three. Love that sound going through the net. Those mics up on the uh, up on the backboard really make it make it lively. Tickle the twine. Stutrieff over to Rice. Rice, good pass along the baseline. And foul on the beat. And this time they were going to make sure, Tim Neverett, that we were going to make the three. We got about a uh, full foot behind it. Knocked it down. No need to review that one. Grant Sherfield from Wichita State, originally out of Fort Worth, Texas. Derek Alston. His dad's a head coach in the G League, of course, NBA G League. Westchester Knicks. Long time, well, was an NBA player, long time professional player. Anytime you have a, a young guy like Mr. Alston, Soaking up that kind of knowledge from a young age, you know he's going to be, what, as Leon Rice says, the top 1% of the basketball IQ in the country. Malat Armish back in. He's going to give Alston a break. Alston wanted to stay in. Can't imagine that, a player not wanting to go out. Between that and never following players. Uh, <laughs> they all, you know, I mean, you can't blame them. They're here no. to play. They want to stay in. Yeah. Sure, you've heard it a number of times. So oh, yeah. Under the breath comments on the way by. Coach, what'd I do? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. You just need a break. No, I just like talking to you. Come on over. Sit down. 11-11. Oh, Derek Alston, fourth in the conference in points per game, seventh in field goal percentage, and third in free throw percentage, 86%. Both, the, both these teams over 75% from the free throw line as a team. And I believe Colorado State's even above that. Right there with Boise State at about 77. Sherfield out to Meeks. Meeks launches. Back rimmed it and Rice the rebound. Meeks, Iowa product, Kansas product. Went to Brewster Academy, played for Jason Smith. At Brewster Academy. Uh, strong inside. Yeah, Brewster Academy up in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. Great prep school, great prep program there. Of course, you know New Hampshire well, Tim. I do. I spent the majority of my life there. We were talking, <laughs> you were giving me driving directions to Brewster Academy earlier. It's not easy to get to. No. Out of bounds. And that'll be Boise State's basketball. Just to prove to you that some of the old school principles haven't haven't uh, ended. A big guy throwing down to a big guy and a little kind of mini high low there still exists. Well, some of those staples, they just never stop working. You know, the pick and roll, pick and pop thing. I mean, just all the basic. Give and go. Yeah. Well, we just saw a little clip of Tim Daria. We've got Craig Neal, two former head coaches in the Mountain West, now as lead assistants. 
the offensive foul. Leon Rice down there on the bench, but this is where he was before the game up here with Tim Miles. Chopping it up. Uh, this is a great scouting report I'm sure you're getting right here. I tell you, uh, I think we're talking about uh, um, post -E We're laughing, so we're not talking about the game. I promise you that. <laughs> Well, Leon came up and visited with Doug Gottlieb, Doug Gottlieb and me on Friday right after the game. He's very approachable, very uh, very open, and, and, and great to be around as what? far as the college basketball coach goes. The last time I was with him, we were eating uh, cornbread at the Bull Weevil in Augusta, Georgia. Is that right? And it was phenomenal. Uh, Kijam, strong rebound. That was jalapeno up. Meeks had it just stolen. His pocket was absolutely picked by Rice. Max Rice, of course, is his, uh, as his coach calls him, 12. Foul underneath. Both Meeks and Himes were all over Malad and Armish. Armish has been impressive everywhere you go. Down low, triggering offense out front. You know what's uh, fun to listen to, Tim, as we have our live mics, is uh, how much you can hear the coaches coaching, and you can hear the benches trying to create energy, and they've got that little L-shaped bench thing going now on the baseline. You know, as a coach, all you deal with is uh, the ref telling the coach, sit those guys down, everybody's got to sit down, sit down. Well, they don't say that anymore because there's no fans. So it's great to see these guys trying to create energy for their team. A little bit of energy in here. You've got the Howlers, which is the student band here. They're here. Uh, this goes back in session. Obviously, the, uh, the cheer squad is here. And they're allowing up to 50 fans, friends and family, who are invited yeah. to be in here today. That's awesome. We're not far away. We're getting closer. 15-11, four-point lead for Boise State. Loose ball. And it's picked up by Meeks, but he traveled. So that'll be a turnover, and Boise State will have the ball when we come back. Beautiful Lake Tahoe, not very far from where we're sitting here at the Lawler Event Center. New tracks, new teams, and a new champ. The 2021 NASCAR season starts in just seven days with the great American race, the Daytona 500, February 14th, only on Fox. Great ending on Friday night here. Boy, 2.9 seconds left. Sherfield able to knock this little runner down, will fade away. And that gives Nevada a 74-72 lead. Ray J. Dennis gets the pass from Shaver, the chance to win it. In and out. And Nevada with the upset. It couldn't be more down. And what a clever little play for uh, Boise State with Ray J starting on one side of the floor, cutting across to the other. Of course, then inbounding it, quick pass up. And they actually had a shot at the end of the first half that banked in and went in and out. Right. So Just a tough loss. That was a difficult one for Boise State to process. They got over it pretty quickly. And back to work here today. Amish inside with a basket. Well done. The Boise State Bigs do a great job of bouncing off penetration, finding those open areas, and of course, then you take a skill like number 12, let him dump it down, easy layup. Traveling violation, another turnover for Nevada. Here it is, you find this little pocket right there, draw two, nobody on the midline for Nevada, layup. Dennis hurries it up the floor, Dutrieff to Rice as the Broncos work the ball around the perimeter. Leading by six. Dennis charging toward the basket. Behind the back pass to Armish. Gets his own rebound, kicks it back up. Three ball, Rice, good. Holy cow, what a kick out. Impressive. Solid three-pointer oh. for 12. Oh. Uh, there be a whistle here. What, what did we do? Oh, we had a foul. Uh, it looked like Dutri was going to get away with a clean steal there momentarily on Foster. The bomb by Rice. Make it a 20 to 11 lead. That on the inbound with full shot clock. 
Cambridge for three. He's got it. High-level score this young guy is. Transfer. Cambridge had to sit out last season after his transfer from Brown. At Brown, he averaged nearly 16 points a game over his final couple of years. There's a long one by Rice. Nevada with a chance to cut the lead again. Inside Washington. Went around, Amherst, and got the roll. That was an unexpected uh, route, but it worked. Washington really doing a good job being the first big down the floor. Alston with the dribble, but keep an eye on Cambridge. Yeah, he can get it going. And once he starts, he's got, leads the team in three-pointers made, something he does very, very well. Foster on the foul, had an arm bar. There's a little hash right in, right in front that they're jumping on right now. You know, outside of that hash, you can't have you can't have an arm on it. You can't have equal pressure. When it gets to that point, you can. A little technicality in the rules. Right there in the middle of your screen, you can see yep. what Coach is talking about. We'll get to that later because they're going to continue to post up Alston. And Alley, open up backwards jam for Cambridge. How sweet was that? Finish. High flyer showing off. Rice kicks it to Dennis. It's now a two point game. Off the foot of Amish and a chance now to tie or take the lead for Nevada. They were down as many as eight. And taken away, Sherfield. Sure Lost it. Rice, no look to Shaver. Max Rice, affectionately known as 12 to his dad. Missed the shot there, and Foster running it out. Played for John Stockton's AAU team, of course. Wide open look at a three for Kane Millick. Go, go, go. Go. Somebody's about to yell, stop. One of these coaches is about to yell, stop. A charge, Marcus Shaver Jr. It's been back and forth. Oh my, wow. Perfect feed by Grant Sherfield. Quite a finish for Desmond Cambridge Jr. Quick seven points, but two fouls. And Steve Alford is not an auto bench guy. So a quick timeout on the floor. And just a two point game. Boise State leading Nevada. Pristine Lake Tahoe, one of the more beautiful bodies Jim, of water in the United States. Let's get States. out of here, man. Look at that place. That nice. Back inside the Waller Event Center with Tim Miles, Tim Neverett. Good ball game here. 2018 in favor of Boise State, first half. Andrew Willis watching Mountain West basketball on FS1. Shurfield tries to charge again. Had just enough room to shoot. And that ball taken down by Devonair Dutri. Boise State doing a much better job not letting Sherfield get to his left his right hand, keeping him on the left side of the floor. Ray J. Dennis. Not enough arc on him. Here come the Wolf back again. One-handed runner. The tip in is good for Washington. Well, you want to talk about being in the right place at the right time. Warren Washington right there. And fouled by a key jab underneath. Talking to Steve Alford about him, he just really, you know, a true seven-footer, Oregon State transfer, and just working harder and harder, core strength, strength things, and then, of course, developing the skill. He's a super athlete, runs the floor, but catching the ball inside, finishing like that, really been improving. Huge help to this Nevada Wolfpack team. And the Wolfpack now in front for the first time in a while. Steve Alford said before Friday's game they needed to play their best game. They may have just done that in winning 74-72, and here they are again. 
finding themselves back in front by a slim margin. Well, another well-played game by both teams. A.J. Dennis to Dutri, now Alston. Bounce pass backing in Acott. Emmanuel Acott spins in the lane and scores. Boise State does a good job of inverting their offense. That means they put their wings, Alston, Kijap, out in that long post, isolate him, give him the ball, and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Cambridge with the basketball again. Oh. Thought about going up and <laughs> thought about it again. Fairfield, a little finger roll. Washington couldn't get the tip in, and Austin on the run out. Two finishes in a row to his left hand. He's just not been able to finish. Good job on the scouting report for Boise State. Cambridge gives it back to the point guard, Sherfield. Long feed. Cambridge steps into a three. Long rebound for Boise State, but a whistle. Uh, the old flop warning, Tim. Yep. So Cambridge shooter, went down. Shoot. Shooter kicks his leg out, and here we go. Well, it wasn't much flopping on this play. Certainly, perfect pass by Sherfield, and the finish by Cambridge. This guy's ready to get back at it. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY to the number on your screen to help kids get in the game. Tim, I think he just saw that dunk by... Uh by Cambridge, and uh, I think he was uh, celebrating that. But you talk about kids, how about this? Steve Alford's kid, Corey Alford, head coach at Huntington College, uh, Hunting University in Indiana, 14 and seven this year, one of the best small college NEI uh, leagues in the country, following his dad's footsteps. Yeah. Of course, he started at Manchester just, a, you know, what, 30, 40 miles down the road. Right. 31 years later, he's here in <laughs> Reno, Nevada. Steve would never Long admit to that. Wow. Amish wide open, and he was defended well by Meeks. That was a great block, but a nice, great interior passing catch. Come on, Trey. Okay, come on. One point game getting later in the first half. Nevada climbing up the standings a little bit in the Mountain West. And that one knocked out of bounds off Nevada. There's Boise playing out of that long post again, finding Armush, and he just, Meeks does a great job getting a, a hand on that just to tip it away, otherwise it's an easy two points. What a good basketball game. I love it. You talk about the Mountain West basketball, of course I had a chance to be a part of it with Utah, BYU, TCU, Boise had just joined us. This is closer to a high major league than it is a quote-unquote mid-major league. I'm, the players are terrific, it's well coached. Just a fun league to be a part of. I'm glad Fox Sports is covering it. Long three by Rice, no good, just a bit short. Yeah, they've always had terrific players in this conference. Meeks, being chased around by Acott. Acott's ramping up the defensive pressure. And they just switched up on Milling. Look at that pressure. They really get a lot of sports. Shot clock's got to be getting down there. It's down to three as Sherfield launches and no rim at all. Because he got to his right wow. hand. When he gets to his right hand, he is fatal for defenses. What a great individual play, just like at the end of the ball game the other night. He is something. That is for certain. Seven points for Grant Sherfield so far. Shaver in a crowd loses the basketball. 23-22 Nevada. Milling. Out of not in France. Whistle. Talk about going to the right hand. Sherfield putting on a clinic. Yeah, he's even kind of getting shaded that way. That's just a mistake because so late in the clock, he is so strong getting in there, playing off of two feet. You can see the strength in his hips. And then going to his left, for whatever reason, he's just not as comfortable. We saw two missed layups earlier tonight in the lane. It's just the way it goes. But that's a tough defensive error. Late in the clock like that, that's going to come up at halftime for sure. 
unlikely free miss. Free throw Shaver misses. Yeah, Shaver, pretty good free throw shooter. 85%. That one didn't fall. Both teams in the bonus, by the way. The stage, 18 fouls for Boise State, 7 for Nevada. Foster robbed at the bucket. Steve Alford had said he thought that was a big key to them getting better as the season went on, was getting the foul line more often. Acott to Rice, he hands off. Dutrieff back to Acott, thinking about it, pulls up, got it. Well, he's in a good rhythm. You could see that the other night, making threes, and now that pull-up jumper. The lead goes back to the Broncos. Sherfield to Foster. Now Coleman, guarded by Shaver. He's picked off there by Robbie Robinson, who just got in the game. Robinson, wraparound pass, Sherfield. Shot clock down to seven. Coleman for three. And a foul underneath on Nevada. Just a tip by Armas. Look at this rhythm shot, Acott. Transfer out of Arizona. A couple Pac-12 transfers in this game. I should say more than a couple. More than a few. You got Key Jab from Oregon. There's one that comes to mind right away. Dutree from Arizona. Yeah, another one. Acott from Arizona. And Acott missing the free throw. Leon Rice not happy with the free throw shooting lately. And of course, the man with the ball, Sherfield, was committed to UCLA and Steve Alford. And then when there was a change in leadership there, he went to Wichita State and eventually transferred back to Nevada to play for Coach Alford. I'll tell you, the Alford-Craig Neal Noodles tandem is really outstanding. They built it big time in New Mexico. They're going to build it big here, too. Rebound to Boise. Dutrieff ahead to Shaver. Acott steps into one and makes the rebound. I, I agree with you. I think that they've got a lot of the puzzle pieces in yeah. place. They've got more on the way and knows how to build a winner. Took UCLA to the Sweet 16 three times. Shaver is hammered as he goes to the basket. Robinson will commit the personal foul. 24-23, Boise State in front late in the first. Here's a list of the Julius Irving Award nominees. Derek Alston on top of that list. Playing in the game today, another Mountain West player, Matt Mitchell from San Diego State. A list of very, very good college players up for the Julius Irving Award. But the original, there was nobody look, like the doctor. Look at those numbers. 26 points, 20 rebounds. Comac Long Island. This man was uh, such a great... I was a Laker fan, so I wasn't always the Dr. J fan because he could really punish you. See him there playing in the old cage at, in Amherst, Massachusetts. His two seasons in Western Mass. I, Tim, I think we take our vertical, triple it, and I think we're close. I think we could get him. If we if, combine it and then triple it, right? Yep, yeah, combine, triple it. I agree. I agree. He, he was a physical specimen and still is. I mean, he's just a amazing player and generous I, I had a chance to spend some time with him over the last couple of years different just moment here and a moment there what a great guy so shaver shooting a one and one let's go i got it close and he'll get the bonus what? two point lead for boise state 325 to go until halftime three for eight right get four for eight and five for nine now as a team from the line yeah that's a surprise a little bit but not necessarily you've been on the road three or four days I always thought you got a little worse every day you were away from home. It's a little different this year for the players and staffs because they play a game. They don't travel right away. They stay in town. They have an off day in between, and then in this case, it's an earlier game. Oftentimes, they're night game followed by a night game. Offensive foul whistled on Zane Meeks. I believe that's two on Zane Meeks, isn't it? Good job by Alston, keeping his, just took a brutal shot from the shoulder by Zane Meeks. Almost a flopping call, but not quite. Good defensive uh, coverage there by Derek Alston, Jr. Michael Greenstein, Michael Irvin, and Dan Church, the officials here this afternoon in Reno. Three different guys from Nevada have two fouls. Dutri is taking it to the rack and fouled on the way. 
And a foul will be whistled on Trey Coleman. Nice take here. Really a long, impressive player. I, I, you know, to me, he's one of these guys that's just going to emerge and get Dutrieff, get better and better and better as time goes on. He's got a lot of guys in front of him. When you look at Shaver, rock solid, number 12, Alston. Six twenty-three and Shaver, rather uh, Dutrieff with the basket after Coleman's second personal, now four-point lead for the Broncos. Well, you coached against both of these guys, and even more recently in Nebraska, when you played UCLA when Steve Alford was coaching there. What was that like to prepare for these guys and coach against both? Steve well, and Leon. What was nice in one. What was funny is, uh, well, LeVar Ball was at the game, first of all, so I had to listen to him, too. But uh, uh, Lonzo Ball was his point guard, won 30 basketball games. He was a one seed in the NCAA. Nice job by Washington here. But what's interesting is to see the same things kind of happen over. The system of play has not varied for these guys. They, they run similar actions than they've run before. Certainly there's always innovations and some changes, but there'll be a time when when Steve Alford's gonna put you in a blender is what I call it. He'll put Cambridge or Sherfield in and two screeners and it's Bobby Knight's old tight triangle and it's a pain in the butt to guard and then he's got four or five things that noodles will run off of that. Bryce missing Amish the rebound and sports out of bounds back to Nevada. Well, these guys have a bench, and they were a big benefit to the Wolfpack on Friday. Look, KJ yeah. Hype, 17 off the bench, makes four, milling three today. Goose Zero. Wow. That's, uh, you know, you talked about both teams, about developing their depth, and that's so important for both of them. And you can tell the second day, you know, it gets a little chippier. A few more whistles, a little more grabbing and hold. They know the screen's coming. I'm going to bump you on the cross screen. Well, you expect a different game. In terms of the score, it's not all that different. It was 33-28 at halftime on Friday. 27-25 now, more than two minutes to go. But we are seeing a more physical game than we saw here Friday. Yeah, uh, Coach Rice brought that up as we talked to him, and there was no question you were going to see a more physic physical Boise State team. Washington too long on the free throw. Both teams in the double bonus. Acott checks in, and Smith will check out for Boise State. These teams, it's remarkable how similar they are in so many ways. Even when you look at some of the stat numbers. Uh, and even today, it's just a very even affair. One-point game. the ball to Shaver. Shaver driving out of bounds off of Robinson of Nevada. Now Grant Sherfield, he's putting up some big time numbers, especially when it comes to assist and turnovers. Well, he has been phenomenal, and you uh, teed me up on that. In the last three games, 29 assists, four turnovers. UNLV and uh, twice in Boise State. Those are incredible assist and turnover numbers. Boise's got a little cold from the field. Having yeah, a career high 14 assists on Friday night. I mean, but the numbers over the last three games have been remarkable. No, those are, I mean, those are first team all league type numbers. Battle for the loose ball. Shaver comes up with it. Robinson was defending him. Under a minute and a half remaining, first half. An offensive foul by Shaver. He doesn't agree, but it'll go the other way. Yeah, overhandles it a little bit, overcommits to the drive, turnover. Good defensive play, though. Sherfield. Sure Foster back to Sherfield. Sure Coming down to a minute to play in the opening half. Offensive foul as Washington pushed off. The extended lower arm. 
know, you just can't extend your your from the elbow down. You can't extend your arm. And there you see it on the left side as he's extended it. You just can't do that. It's a small play, but it's just the way you push the guy off, try and get some separation. Another turnover for Nevada. Well, you mentioned Bobby Knight's name. I remember a number of years ago doing a game at the pit in Albuquerque when Alford was the head coach in New Mexico. They brought in Texas Tech and Bob Knight. Wow. You think there was any hype around that game? Yeah. Teacher and student? I think the pit would have been jumping, as they say. It was. It was. It was amazing. Oh, my God. A foul as Alston went up and Foster got him. Physical game when you look at these two teams and again like we say the second day you know you know where it's going here they are playing in that long post again where they're isolating and foul a jump shooter must have caught him on the elbow that we couldn't have seen because it didn't look like there was a lot there and also was fading away so he had to hit him in the shooting action on the elbow probably accidental of course second foul on foster the Wolfpack have spread the fouls around. They have six players with two fouls each. Oh, Alford and Neal talk it over with Nevada. Quick timeout, three-point lead, Boise State. Just under 50 seconds to go in the half, 29-26, Boise State. These two teams have been playing pretty evenly. Well, Tim, and we talked about it, and you look at on the season even, these guys match up very close to one another. Uh, you know, whether it be rebounding, three-point shooting, assists, and of course, that's not every category, but but those are huge numbers when, you put, when you're coaching a team, putting together a team. Two very similar teams. Sherfield with a lane. Dribbling to the basket, he'll score, he's fouled, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play at the line. Yeah, shifty little move there. Clever point guard move, but somebody blew a defensive assignment there. That had to be a switch that we missed. Ray J. Dennis right there, who also does not switch. And then, of course, we know uh, to his right hand, this young man's going to score the ball. Well, the orange uniforms, it looked like he was dribbling around traffic cones. <laughs> hey, we used to wear uh, orange once a year at Colorado State, and I think we had a few games like that, too. Well, they wore them the other night. At, uh, uh, I think that might have been night. the first road game that yeah. they've ever done that. I'm going to have to talk to Coach Medved. Beat Wyoming last, with him last night at the Arena Auditorium. Oh, hook, hook shot good. And a 31-29 edge. Shot clock's dead, so Nevada can play for the last shot of the half. Yeah, a little zipper set here. Probably middle ball screen here eventually. Oh, side screen. Sherfield with three seconds on the timer. Puts one up and in. What a shot for Sherfield as time expires in half number one, giving Nevada a one-point lead, 32 to 31. Grant Sherfield loves the, the buzzer. He loves the end of the clock. Holy cow, look at this move. Well, double figures for Sherfield here in the first half. 13 for the point guard as he finishes the first half with a cold-blooded three-pointer. Well, this was a good grant that the University of Nevada got, huh? Grant Sherfield, 13 points in the first half. He was outstanding. Yeah, he, he, and he missed two bunnies, or he'd be sitting at 17 points real easy. Sherfield beating the buzzer and giving Nevada the lead. Stats through one half of play. What do you see there, Coach? Well, I think the big thing is bench points. Uh, you know, four boys, he's got to be a positive sign, but you don't like to be behind, even if it's only by one. Really, it's, it's Grant Sherfield who has, has been the difference in the game. One-point game, 32-31. Nevada leading Boise State. On 2nd Avenue, that's the home of the Reno Aces, AAA Farm Club of the Arizona Diamondbacks here in Reno. Just about ready to go for the second half of the Lawler Events Center here in Reno, Nevada. This game close. Last game, also close. Came down to this. Under three seconds left. Ray J. Dennis left the hand, looked good, looked like it went down, and then came out. And Nevada 
hung on to a 74-72 win. And here we are, same script, different day. If I'm the Boise State fans, I'm going to make one request. Burn the tape. I can't watch it again. It's killing me. That thing was down. It's amazing. We're set up for a great finish here. And then I think there's one other game somewhere after this. Is that true? Is there a game it's a big, It's a big game, I hear, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Tom Brady plays today. Yeah, a former Montreal Expos draft choice. I did not know that. Yep. yep. What round did he go in? 64 or I don't know. 39? The... Uh, Soissant, uh, I don't, I'm not sure which round he went. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know French. It didn't matter. No. Here we go. Half number two on this Sunday afternoon in Reno. Tim Miles, I'm Tim Neverett. Glad you're along watching Mountain West basketball with us on FS1. And a little zone to start the second half. Cambridge, quick turnaround from the elbow short. And Kijab comes up with the ball for the Broncos. Austin, quickly defended by Coleman. Kicks it way back outside. And a foul on Foster. That'll be his third. Tim, just for your information, Tom Brady was taken in the 18th round by the Montreal Oh, these we. <laughs> I uh, 18. We oui, we? Oui? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 18, but uh, it was only the 507th pick that year. That's with baseball. You mean there's 506 guys better at him than baseball and that year? There were okay. probably 700 guys better than him <laughs> in baseball that year. Boise State back in front. And back in zone. I'm a little surprised, but it, I, I'm not stunned. Leon Rice has not played a lot of zone. Actually, Nevada's played more. Uh, foul before the shot. And Foster will pick up two quick ones. He'll now have four. More than likely, he's headed for a seat next to Coach Alford. I think Alford. they're calling that on the defense. On oh, did they? Fighting through the screen. I think you're right, actually. So he does have three fouls. Foster and Kijab picks up one. Nevada will maintain possession of the basketball here. Shurfield out to Foster. Launches a three. Bang. And he says, Tim never I'm staying in the game. You can see, folks, Craig Neal, Steve Alford, See him right off a plane at a prep school. Literally, the man's flown 17 hours. They recruit him in the next three weeks after he committed. That's how strongly they feel about him. This young man, Daniel Foster, is going to be a very, very good Mountain West player. Golden State Prep, hometown Melbourne, Australia. Well, he got all lined up outside the arc and had plenty of time. It, you know, he reminds Steve Alford of Hugh Greenwood, only even bigger than Hugh. He was another Aussie, played for him with the Lobos at New Mexico. Highly skilled young man. Now Coleman picked up the dribble. He's looking for some help, finds Washington. Almost cut him off, but somehow found Coleman underneath. He's cut the freshman. Scoring's a bonus. When he scores, that really helps Nevada. And Nevada with another chance, so they've come out of the locker room starting the second half a little hot. And whistle as Shaver was trying to maintain possession. Let's look at this cut. Yeah, they go double the long post on that. And anytime you uh, don't get your defense to that middle of the lane, the middle of the lane, the midline, you got a problem. Nice cut, good finish with contact. So Boise State trying to make the most of a possession. They find themselves down by four. Alston, short from long range. That's a look they get for him often. They love that DHO dribble handoff. Oh, nice play. Oh, big time hammer from Washington. That quick drag and transition, Tim Never. You come down, hit a quick ball screen, get draw two. The defense can't get in to help on that. Easy dunk. Looks like somebody just got lost on defense there. Another long look for Alston. No good. Well, Nevada's going under that DHO. Gives him a chance to set his feet and shoot it. He's made people pay with that. Not today. It's charge. Well, they're going to call this one on Foster. 
Oh, coming right at you. Love that rip cam. Love it. Three in a row. I, once again, I feel like, uh, you know, coaches make better officials than officials. I think that was a little botch call, but we'll see. We'll keep it here for now. Foster does indeed now have four fouls. He's on the bench and coming in Kane Milling to replace him. There's that long post with Kijab. Quick spin for Kijab, missing Amish, trying to get around Washington. Doesn't get the roll, but he'll go to the line as Washington will pick up a personal foul. We have a saying, any shot at the rim is a good shot. So Kijab makes a quick spin, gets the ball up. Now Armush is right there for the offensive rebound. And so when, when you have that much action at the rim, those guys following up the action is really important. Nice play by Armush. They mentioned good shot. Steve Alford the other day was talking about, you know, what is a good shot versus a bad shot. They keep track of bad shots. I believe in his press conference Friday after the game, he said they were two for five in bad shots. Well, only having five is, is excellent, by the way. And then making two of those five is certainly a bonus. Yeah, make those bad shots. What defines a bad shot? Well, uh, I t here, how about this? I'll tell you one when I see one here next, okay? okay. But I would say... For instance, we saw Max Rice take a very, very deep three earlier. Unnecessary. If he takes and misses it short, if he just steps in one more step, takes a normal three, now you got a, a three points on your side. More zone by Boise State. Looks straight 2-3 to me. Uh, Shaver swung and missed, apparently, as uh, that one went out of bounds off of Nevada. Steve Alford is trying to ref his way out of that one, too, I saw. Hey, up, Shaver. Cambridge. Well, Cambridge will inbound. Let's see if he got a piece of it here or not. Boy, pretty close. And it's right in front of Steve, too. Now, Coleman missing the shot. Alston the rebound, and Boise State on the run. AJ Dennis, wrap around to Amish. Amish, left hand hook off the glass. He got the roll. Nice play. Amish now with 12 points. Double figure game for Milad Amish out of Belgrade, Serbia. That's a strip by Dennis. And a three on one. Alston stepping in, finger roll, good. How about this? Nevada's already played 12 people today after only playing eight. Our crack statistician here with uh, on top of this uh, plays eight the other day, 12 already today because of such bad foul trouble, of course. On no look inside of the two handed jam. For Desmond Cambridge. He's such a great athlete. Two point game, 41 39. I like the pace of this second half. Not so many whistles. These guys are making plays. Shaver, one hand to Austin, whips it to Dennis. Thomas stepping into the lane, and it's blocked by KJ Himes. Himes hasn't been a big factor in this one tonight, as he was Friday, and Coleman fills it up for three. And folks, if you're wondering as this is happening, why isn't Leon Rice calling a timeout? Because the next time the whistle blows, he's got an automatic timeout. And you're very limited in your timeout, so you gotta be able to play through this. And with this series history, you might be figuring also you think that he may need those timeouts in a close game down the stretch? No doubt. There is a whistle and a foul. Leon Rice will get to talk about it. But Which, Trey Coleman for a tray of his own at Nevada Leeds. <laughs> Derek Alston Jr. The Boise State Broncos find themselves down five, but watch this play. A three-on-one and how Alston finishes. No dribble, covers about 18 feet of ground, a little bit north and south, a little bit east and west. When he can get that kind of, if he gets any kind of space, any kind of space, and he used the Euro step to get that space, I tell you, he's just so good. You, you've got to have physical contact on him at all times to keep him under control. Well, he hopes to help Boise State get back to the NCAA tournament. This is... Uh... Always an interesting time of year when you're in February. People checking the resumes, all the details, making sure everything's buttoned up. 
Alston throws it out of bounds. Well, Nevada with the basketball, but they've got a little foul trouble right now. Foster has four. The fourth foul he picked up was on that last blocking call. It was a block charge, but it went Boise State's way. And they still have a couple other guys with two, which is why Steve Alford's had to play 12 guys instead of eight. But it's nice to have that kind of problem. Amish fouls Kane Milling. Don't like that foul on Amish. I think you got to make him finish that over you. That'll be the third on Amish, and Foster is going to sit for a few minutes now. And that's part of the, you know, he's, he missed the first seven or eight games. Started late. He just has been the last four or five games for Nevada. And he's a freshman. That's part of the acclimation process. That's part of getting used to the speed of the game. Fouls is very common on, on a young player. They just commit too many. He'll improve on that greatly. You've got to be interested to see how he's going to be at this time next year. Foster yeah. has adjusted to the speed of play at the conference level. So maybe get to know your teammates by not having to grab and go every team meal known to mankind. You get to sit and visit a little bit with them, too. That's another That'll great play. Alston lines one up. Got it. That's a three ball. Derek Alston, Jr. I don't know if you saw or not, but Cambridge motion to the bench either needs a sub or knows it was a mistake. There's one way to make up for it. Get a tough loader. Good, Cambridge again. Cambridge with 11 points. Back into double figures. Abu Kijab worked his way in, couldn't get it to fall, but that'll be a foul on KJ Hyams. Really a strong drive there by Kijab, and then again, with that length, it's just an easy three-pointer. And you can see here that little runner, that's a tough, tough man, play, man. I guess. But Boise State with Kijab, putting him in that long post. He caught the ball facing the, the basket, dribbled a couple times, turned his butt to the basket, backed it down like old Charles Barkley, and eventually drew the foul. Jab lining the other one up. One for two from the line for him. And Sherfield, long pass. And that basket is good. That's another assist. That's the eighth assist for Sherfield. He is approaching his second consecutive double-double. He's got 13 points. He had a double-double Friday night. And if he gets two more assists, that'll be his third double-double of the season. He's creating a lot of offense for his team. Another rim run out of Nevada. And another long post out of Boise. We're seeing staples, folks. Emmanuel Acott with the basket. Coming off a career-high 19 points Friday. You know, hard part for your defense is you're just on an island there. There's no double team. you got to guard one-on-one. -on -one. 13 minutes to go. Sherfield trying to dribble around Ray J. Dennis. Coleman open. He jab. Picked up the air ball and gets it down the floor for Boise State. Acott. Two man game on the left side and can't get it to roll. Good possession. That'd be a good shot, Tim. And Sherfield now with 15 points. Tim, that'd be a better shot right there. The layup. That is a good shot. And Nevada, six point lead. Their largest of the game. On three ball by Alston. What an answer. What Man. an answer by Derek Alston Jr. 16 points for Alston. He's turning it on, and he's on his way to another 20-point game. He has nine of those this year. Much needed for Boise State. You don't want this thing getting away from you at all. And what I mean by that is like 10 points uh, getting down. Feels like when you're on the road is a bad number. In transition. Alston trying to take advantage of this turnover. Swatted by Cambridge and a foul. 11.50 to go. In half number two, Derek Alston dialing long distance from Reno.
Saturday on Fox, Luca Garza leads number eight Iowa against Michigan State at 2.30 Eastern. Then it's a huge Big East tilt between third-ranked Villanova and number 15 Creighton. All on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Tim, these guys are cooking with gas. Both teams combined eight for 10 on their last uh, 10 possessions. Uh, Nevada's five of their last six and Boise three out of their last four. And when you see a guy like Olsen tee up that jumper like he did, and you wonder, well, why is he on the list? That is what his team needed desperately at that point in time. He was willing to take it and had enough skill and ability to make it. I think that's a huge play now as they step up to the foul line. They're down six. They weren't able to really break that until he started hitting the threes. And, and then got fouled in transition. Right. Now he's back at the line and a chance to add more. But the pace of the game's picked up. Yeah, the refs lost their whistle. Let's face it. Let's just call it what it. Let the players and coaches do their thing, Tim. You've never asked a ref to lose his whistle, have you? I've asked them a lot of things that they once or twice, know, maybe didn't always acquiesce. Like never. <laughs> Rarely, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that was good for Alston. So he continues to add to his point total, 17. And it is a two-point Nevada lead. Sherfield, outstanding, but lost control of the ball. That's a rare turnover for him. Well, the hardest job is the passing because you 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 have to limit. Like that was a set play, a rip cross screen for the big guy, a guard trying to get the big guy in the low post. You expect he's going to cut one way. He settles in the post higher, throw it out of bounds. Uh, that happens. Manuel Acott. Devonair Dutrie finds Max Rice. Gets a high screen from Amrish. And driving, little kick into Amrish in traffic. Won't get a second chance. Amish should have went straight up with it. That's when he had his balance. Cambridge, a little jump stop. Didn't cooperate, and Boise State comes away with it again. Just two for the three. Rice spots up. And goes for the steal, almost got it. That's a good shot, though, in transition. You're not getting a better look and a more rhythm look than that. He had his feet set, just waiting for the ball, waiting for the kick out. And, of course, all the refs on the bench know exactly whose ball this is. Well, it'll end up Nevada's ball, <laughs> as it turns out. Rightfully so, probably, but everybody argues with the government. There's two sides to every call in basketball. <laughs> well, pull up, pop from long range. I, 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 that's going to the bad shot category to me. It's a dribble two, out of rhythm. Alston, corner three, missed. I think it was on target, but he front rimmed it. And now Zane Beeks going to the basket foul. He'll go to the line instead. I got to tell you, I don't like that defensive play. I really believe when you kind of cut in front of a guy like you're undercutting them almost, that almost should be an automatic foul in my book. You know, you're truly trying to swipe the ball, but you're trying to get the guy off his rhythm without making contact. That just concerns me on injury, on those sorts of things. And, and I really like the charge line that they've, been, that they've put in because what that's done is is put in the wall up play where you jump up straight up and straight down right and and now you have most of your concussions happen on block charges as a coach that's just my uh, sample size and so it's a less dangerous play at the rim well they put the restricted area arc in what six seven years ago yeah. and that was probably the most you probably have a good first-hand account of this probably the most argued call by coaches and a difficult call to make by officials the block or the charge and it's cleaned it up like you wouldn't believe and some people don't like it or they don't like the charge i still like the charge it's a way to protect the rim you have shot blockers you got guys that get in there and take a charge and hustle and there's a defined area and it's not too much for the official to actually look at the floor and figure out if they're in or out of the arc Still a two-point game, just about halfway through the second half. Sherfield. Now Meeks tries a corner three. That is a Steve Alford, Craig Noodle staple there. The triangle box look of our well, triangle box look. That Bobby Knight's tight triangle from the old days. Dutrieff didn't have anybody home on the pass. Cambridge. And Rice again the rebound. Rice has been scrappy out there in his minutes. Knocked down one big three. He's missed a few, but he's been around the basketball a lot. Eddie player. 
Austin trying to step in, took an extra step, traveling violation, and a turnover. That was a big possession, chance to tie. Olsen got it in the long post where, where he likes it. reminiscent of what looked like the game winner on Friday from Sherfield. Well, Tim, when he gets to his right hand, I mean, he just is so strong and crafty. You just, it, I mean, it, I know it sounds like a broken record. Fans have heard it, but you cannot let him do this. And then tonight, I think the other thing to look at is these three-point shooting numbers. Yeah, 10 for 29 combined. Well, that's part of the back-to-back -back part of it where I think you know your personnel a little better, uh, except for Sherfield driving right. You know what actions they're running. Just gets a little tougher to execute your stuff. Bryce heads out. Amish has to head out, too. Amish now with four towels. Yeah, back in the game comes Trey Coleman. Three guys with four, two guys with three, uh, three guys with three, three guys with four fouls. Depth is going to be tested. Boise State had a good first half out of bench development. Five-point lead for the Nevada Wolfpack. Dutry. Foul is whistled inside. He might have caught a break there, and that foul will be called on Kane Milling. Church on Sunday. Right there. Dan Church, the referee, the official, and... Leon Rice uh, told him that joke. Yeah, you, he said, uh, oh, yeah, you can ref the game. Church on Sunday? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> you got to understand, coaches don't like any surprises. So when you walk on the floor and all of a sudden they say, oh, where's DJ? Oh, no, Mr. Church is going to ref the game. Uh, you start to kind of lose your mind somehow. Like the forces of the conspiracy conspiracy theories just start popping up and you're right in your head. Oh, boy. And they're ugly. The life of a coach. Good job chasing Meeks off the oh, line. Wide open Sherfield. He gave up the shot. And he drives and he's fouled. Dutri have knocked him down to the floor. That's a hard foul. That's a hard foul on Devonair Dutri. And this is where Sherfield is just so crafty. You know, he's able to shot fake or just ball fake, hesitate, and then go. And then he gave you the little chicken wing hook. I don't know if you noticed that around the hip, but uh, you never get called for that if you're crafty enough. And Grant Sherfield is. Committed to Steve Alford at UCLA, then went to Wichita for a year, and after that didn't work out, ended up back here with Steve Alford. Match made in heaven at least. Nevada, 13 and 7, 8 and 5, and they are playing in a huge game in terms of the standings. Huge game for the Wolfpack, after, especially after Friday, and beating Boise State here in game one. Yeah, there's a lot of other teams out in the Mount West cheering for Nevada right now, too. Uh, somewhat log jammed at the top, Boise State. Now, just behind Utah State, Utah State idle. They are due to play Wyoming Wednesday in Logan, first of a two-game set Wednesday, Friday. And not sure whether or not... Yeah, we don't know see what happened game. at Fresno. Fresno, the second game right beforehand, didn't, uh, didn't get a chance to finish that game, or play that game, I'm sorry. Hopefully we get that game Wednesday. We'll see. It's due to be played right here on FS1. <laughs> Here's Meeks. Inside and KJ Himes. The two-handed finish. Nice high low. Meeks to Himes. Himes bouncy. Boy, he's been playing well. Uh, that's Didn't the guy. First half, but... That's the guy that Leon Rice's team had a hard time with in the first game on Friday night. When he scored a career high 19. But Himes getting back in the offense for the Nevada Wolfpack. Nevada with a seven-point lead, 8.22 to go. Yeah, this team can pass the rock. Yeah, that was a great little action. What you saw as a zipper cut, right? A little down screen, flash the high post, 
throw it right down there with the slam cam. And now you get to see it in its entirety. Very good execution, very good idea in general out of Nevada. Say that pass from the high post looked a little Princeton-like except without the back cut. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Play off those elbows right down the lane line. Uh, Grant Sherfield, 20 points. It's his 11th 20-point game. He continues to pile those up. But Boise State's got to get down to business here in the final eight minutes. Ray J. Dennis had it blocked. Blocked by Kane Milling. But they had Alston on the foul line, I think, to cut it to one. Didn't get it. And uh, now Nevada's being able to open this back up. Uh, clearing out on Nevada. It's going to be an offensive foul. It's that extended lower uh, arm again. KJ Himes will get whistled for it. I don't believe Steve Alford thinks that's the correct call. 58-51, still a close one in Reno. 7.50 left here on FS1. You don't have to drive very far from Virginia Street downtown in Reno to get this kind of scenery here in northern Nevada near the California border. Just beautiful. Derek Alston, Jr. has had himself a good game. Needs to have a, a big finish here tonight, but on Friday, 23 points with... 9 of 14 against Nevada on Friday in a very close loss. But then here again today, he's been terrific once more. 17 points as he's been able to light it up from the outside. Just a special player, Tim. Does so many things right for his team. And when you look at him, I think it's been great for him to have Ray J. Dennis take more of a role uh, on the ball, get him off the ball. You know, he's got that basketball IQ, this huge feel. And sometimes when those guys feel burdened scoring, they don't play as well. Here I think he's just more relaxed and scores easier. So, a lot of armors back in the game playing with four fouls. Shaver bumped there by Cambridge. He's got four, so he has to be careful. That one knocked out of bounds off of Shaver. And Nevada will have a key possession here with 7.39 to go. Great defensive play by Cambridge Jr. That's a little get action where you pass it, follow up for a handoff, and then play off a ball screen. And uh, they sniff that out big time. Watch, he passes, goes back to get it back. Cambridge just blows it up by sticking his hand out there and getting right on the hip of Alston. That's taking up that space that I'm talking about that you can't allow him in. Washington spinning toward the basket. And Coleman somehow came up with it. Sherfield a long one. And Sherfield will knock it out of bounds. Boise State controls. And they need a bucket right here. They do. They do. And they're probably going to go to the long post, I have to imagine. So one of those maybe wings uh, posting up anywhere from 6 to 10 feet uh, off the block and dribbling down and seeing what we can get done here. Alston, he scored 20 in 9 of 17 games this year. He's on the cusp of getting 20 here again today. Shaver battling for his own rebound. Coleman was taken away. Nevada on the move once more. Oh, a steal and a foul. Yeah, that was a really good defensive play. Really not a bad, not, not a bad uh, 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 foul to give that foul so you don't give away the breakaway dunk. Leon Rice had his forearms crossed looking at the officials asking for the intentional. Bad pass by Trey Cole. That was one thing that these foreign trips uh, you pick up on when you're a college team and you go over to Europe and Italy and Spain and you think you have a layup dunk for your young guy and this guy out of nowhere just fouls you and you're like, what is he? Oh, that makes sense. That's uh, starting to trickle into the college game for, for sure. Also play the ball off the cylinder, too. Yeah, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> we don't see that over here. Not yet. Canada. Canada, see yeah. in Canada. I got my first college win ever in Canada. Mayville State over University of Winnipeg. Called my 94-year-old dad to tell him. And he said, does it really count when you're in Canada? That was his reaction. Thanks, Dad. I know you're listening today. We're going to get you another win soon. Did he ask you? In relation to the exchange rate, if it counted. Is that True. Yes, I think that's what he meant. Okay. It was three quarters of a win. Oh, a step back jumper. 
You never know when it leaves his hand what it's going to do. That time it missed. Both teams have gone cold here recently now since we talked about how hot they were. This is that long post I'm talking about. Akon, turnaround, hook, baby hook shot, no good. Again, Boise State needs to take advantage of these possessions. They're right there, and you get that ball on the glass, maybe uh, you can able to take a little more contact and finish that better. Oh, oh. Sherfield sure underneath is caught up. Trying to get out of the key. Now he's open for a corner three. Got it. Oh, and a shot. A little more comfortable out there than he was down low. 23 points for Sherfield. Largest lead for Nevada now at 9, 61-52. Alston looking to answer. Cambridge defending him with his back to him. <laughs> Acott down the line. That was stripped away by Washington. Good defensive play. Acott with a good drive. That's right what you want, right at the rim. Good strip. Big possession here. You get him in double figures. Get that lead from 9 to 11 or 12. Nevada came into this series with Boise State after sweeping their in-state rival UNLV running Rebels. And Steve Alford felt that they were playing pretty good basketball, but I think you'd have to say, I don't know if it's even arguable, that they're playing their best basketball during this series against Boise State. Well, Leon Rice told me they're starting to click once Meeks came back. When St. Meeks was off of injury, came back, I think it was after the Wyoming series, they were starting to click. Steve Alford wants to talk this over. A quick timeout from the Nevada Wolfpack. Who were trying to spoil the Mountain West party. They really weren't fighting for a while. And they now were. They've, they've crashed it. And they're hoping to hold on here today and pull off an unlikely sweep of the Boise State Broncos. Five minutes to go in a 61-52 lead. There's the brain trust right there in Nevada basketball talking about what's next, how to ice this thing away. Noodles, Craig Neal, Steve Alford. Look, a nice kick out here. And then Trey Coleman, he's no dummy for a freshman. Find your money. Grant Sherfield with the big three. Nice swipe by Washington just to make sure that ACOT doesn't get that thing up on the glass. A good clean swat. So the Wolfpack talking this one over right now. Now, Boise just has not been able to get any kind of run together. They've, they've put together some defensive stops. When you look at this, Ar Armush and Alston with 29, the rest of the team at Shaver, Ray J. Dennis, everybody, right? Only 23 points. You'd expect more out of that with a team with the depth that they have out of, uh, out of Boise State. And Armish has 12 of those points. He also has eight rebounds, so with four fouls, if he can stay in the game, get a couple of more boards, he'd have his third double-double. Shaver, one for four. Ray J. Dennis, 0 for four. Kijab, one for five. And two for 13 out of uh, three guys that could really do it for you. Almost all three of those guys are double-figure guys, practically. It comes down to a five-minute game now for both teams. Well, if you're Boise State, you've got to make some ground here fairly soon. You've got to get stops. Here comes a re-screen situation. Oh. Washington cut off by Armish. Good defensive play by Armish. Two seconds on the shot clock. Long three doesn't touch rim, so that's a shot clock violation. Got to feel good if you're Leon Rice and his group there. Good defensive stop, force an air ball. Took away their first option, which was Cambridge. Took away their second option inside. Now you got to score. A cut will hand to Kijan. And Ray J. Dennis whips it to Alston. Lob inside Amish too far. Foster there to take it. Yeah, you do a mini lob from the wing. You got your weak side help sitting right there on the midline. Good steal by Nevada. Brad Sherfield. Foster wow. kicks it out to Coleman. That missed everything and a well, whistle and a foul. But that was a great drive. A nice cut by Foster. A Beautiful baseline pass by Foster. You just need somebody else standing out there. The freshman's not quite, Trey Coleman's not quite ready to knock that down. Look at that, pass, pass, wide open. A foul will be called on Warren Washington of Nevada. It'll be his fourth personal foul. 
Well, maybe this is what Boise needs. A couple easy free throws. You know, get a little more rhythm. See the ball going the, uh, through the hoop. Score while the clock is stopped. That always helps. You know, at some point, Boise is going to have to start putting Nevada to the line to work the clock. At what point do they do that? Yeah, we're, we're not there. We're just not there. We just, I mean, we can play good half-court defense for a couple minutes yet before we worry about that. Chance to cut it to seven. Boise in the double bonus the rest of the way. Nevada not yet in the bonus. Only 16 fouls. Next team foul for Boise State will put him there. So none to give for the Broncos. So Boise going to pick up full court press. I don't know if they'll trap. They might. Trap They're right better. there. Whoop. And a steal. Acott oh. lost it back to Foster, oh. but Acott with a second shot, and Boise takes over. Rice, Acott. Good defense. An offensive foul on Emmanuel Acott. And Boise State, after that full court press and steal, will turn it over. 61-54, second half, as we take you to the trees of Lake Tahoe. Wolfpack in front of Boise State, 61-54, under four minutes to go in the game. Leon Rice, 212 career wins. It's Jason Bobby Dye with 213 career wins, most in school history. His Broncos will have to do a lot of work for him to get career win number 213 this afternoon. And Bobby Dye was really well known for making Boise State basketball connected to the community. And that's certainly been carried on over the course of time. And now when you look at what Leon Rice has done, of course, Bobby was in the uh, big sky. Now they've moved to the WAC, then to the Mountain West. Higher level of competition. Both guys are almost identical in terms of career record at Boise. Really, really interesting to watch. Yeah, Leon said the other day, his most one of his most prized possessions is a rejection letter he got from Bobby Dye when he applied for a job to be his assistant coach. He didn't like the Yakima Community College assistant coaching position? I mean, come uh, on. He didn't like it enough where he went, he went to Gonzaga after that. Yeah. Uh, two more for Sherfield. 25 points. Boy, is he having himself a day. That was a big hoop. He's getting close to his career high of 28. Now Rice, he's missed just in front. Just a little bit short. Yeah, Sherfield on the 2nd of January at the pit. Well, not at the pit, but against New Mexico. Had a career high 28 points. He's knocking on the door here. He's got five rebounds and eight assists. If on the game... side, and Hines oh. misses. Yeah, New Mexico is a location to be determined later. Yeah. Like Breaking Bad. Three ball, Dennis got it. Boy, those are two huge threes, Tim. Ray J. Dennis. Down to six. You just have to play normal, straight up defense. Don't foul. Don't go crazy. Oh! Oh, Cambridge got away with one and got a bucket. And he did. As many lower arms, if they called them the big boys, they uh, passed on that one. That was a big one, too. Cambridge with three fouls. Most of his teammates with four. 65 57. Another three ball attempt, and Acott's got one. Where have we been all day? Here, the last three possessions, nine points for Boise State. And Boise State with two timeouts remaining, just trailing by five. Acott with a great stroke there. Yeah, that was a play right there. I thought Cambridge got away with one a little bit right there. Two very important plays. He's got a five-point game. I wouldn't be surprised to see Boise do the same thing they did when they created the turnover, which was to pick up full. Uh, I think Max Rice came over, trapped the first pass, and they denied the easy pass back to uh, the inbounder. Made him throw over the top, which was an errant pass. They got, the, they basically got the steal. Probably a similar type of, uh, uh, yeah, it worked last time. Let's make them do it right this time. Steve Alford knows what's coming, though, so there's an advantage that way, too. Two minutes and 15 seconds, and the team wearing orange in the way of Steve Alford's best weekend of the season. 
Boy, they have played tremendous basketball, the Wolfpack. Oh, don't gamble there. Sherfield hanging on to it. A little softer, a one and done press, we call that. One good trap and then get out. They pass over to Milling. Cambridge, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Goes with the left hand, now spin around shot. They got the extra roll. They have been working on those pivots into a shot. That's how Sherfield won the game the other night. Now Cambridge with the same. Seven points the difference. Not a lot of time for the Broncos here. And a foul by Foster. That's going to be his fifth. He'll be out of the game. Good job by Ray J. Dennis drawing that foul, getting the clock stopped. Been really quiet tonight. Five assists, but only three points. A minute 36 to go. Freshman Daniel Foster will head to the bench. Trey Coleman will come in. Yeah, Boise going very small here. Kijab, probably their biggest guy on the floor, maybe Acott, in terms of if you're playing with a center or not. These guys, it seems like they play multiple positions anyway. Yeah, well, positionless basketball, I guess they, they call that a new thing. I heard the Golden State Warriors tried it for a while. That seemed to work. Fairly well for them. Five-point game, full-court pressure. A.J. Dennis avoiding the foul. When do they foul? Uh, you can still play defense here, but you're at a point where obviously you have to get a stop. But you're at a point of diminishing returns if you foul this late in the clock. Keep him going left. Uh, Saved by Cambridge. He goes to the rack and scores. Wow. What a play by Desmond Cambridge Jr. That might have been a game saver. Wow. Almost a turnover into that kind of offensive play. Taking contact and finishing. They were about to turn it over, and now it's a seven-point lead. Kijab missing. Washington the rebound. Now you got a foul. There it is. Wow, look at this play. Desmond Cambridge, it's a turnover. They've got him turned over. Cambridge saves it, takes contact still. He has to re-clutch it to put it on the glass, Tim. 17 points now for Cambridge. Two, two high two high level games in a row out of these two teams. Been a lot of fun to watch. Tough weekend for the Broncos. It's not like they've played poorly either. They've been two very good college basketball games both Friday night and today. Just looks yeah. like the Wolfpack catching up with themselves a little bit here. It's mid-February in the Mountain West. What do you want? This yeah, exactly. Happens. That's a tough one. Another foul on Dennis. And you can just see the frustration on Boise State. Don't really pursue the offensive rebound. Don't foul immediately. That's just frustration. You know, that's just young kids, you know, who have their heart set on great things happening, trying to win a conference championship. And now you fall in, fall in even another game behind if this game holds up the way it is. Well, right now on the schedule for Boise State, they go home. On the 11th and 13th, they'll play the running Rebels of UNLV, and then they're scheduled to play Utah State the 17th and 19th. Those four games in Boise. And next up... San Diego State. Yes, Thank you very little. San Diego State to finish the season. <laughs> that should be a great series, though. Oh, more great basketball coming our way. 29 points now for, for Grant Sherfield. What a weekend for him. Yeah, Nevada's going to wrap it up. They've got their largest lead of the game at 11. And they're going to walk this one off. No shot clock to deal with. The Nevada Wolfpack will win their 14th game. They'll go to 14 and 7, 9 and 5 in the conference. Boise State, for the first time in a long time, will lose back to back games. What an impressive effort out of Steve Alford's group in Nevada. You can see how happy they are, just uh, everybody's chuckling and hugging. And Boise is really frustrated, but you know what? This is what it's about. 
There's a lot of ground to be made up for Boise State coming up. You've got the home games. You've got Utah State, San Diego State waiting on you, UNLV. Uh, I think there's a lot of good, good things that can happen for both these teams coming up. Well, the Nevada Wolfpack now sneaking up on the top teams in the Mountain West Conference. Final score in this one. The Wolfpack complete the weekend sweep with a 73-62 win over the Boise State Broncos. For Tim Miles, I'm Tim Neverett. Thanks for watching Mountain West Conference Basketball with us on FS1. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.